Angels are on the brink of extinction. Demons rule over mankind. It has been a decade since Earth descended into ruin. Smothered in black clouds lies land plagued with nightmares and pain, the aftermath of the war between heaven and hell. The Archangel Uriel has finally been given leave to descend to Earth. He alone can renew the fight against the darkness and reignite the war both sides thought was over. With a mission that seems impossible and a reluctant half-demon helping him, Uriel must go against everything he ever believed in if he wants to bring light back to the world. But the Archangel soon finds that this new world is far worse than he ever imagined, and the vicious fangs of demons are the last thing he should fear. So Archangel is sort of a post end of world uh, scenario where heaven and hell has started the final battle and it didn't go exactly as planned. Um, the world kind of sucks, it's being ruled over by demons, and uh, the angels that still remain are being hunted down, are living in secrecy. This is not a great time for the world. Um, so Uriel descends and he is tasked with starting up the war again and and causing trouble and and uh yeah i sort of didn't expect the way this story went at all i mean okay so you get the whole renewed war thing and things that are going on and you know fighting against demons and all that stuff that's perfectly as expected uh it's great it works out fine but the story itself the plot twists and the turns that it takes oh i didn't expect it at all and it was grand yeah um <laughs> it's really hard to describe the things that i didn't expect because they turn out to be um spoilers so let's just say the um cambion the half demon I didn't expect her involvement in the way that it was presented and the things that happened later on with her family and her sister and um, the afterwards bits, uh, that's all fascinating. And um, the situation with the other angels that are still on Earth um, and Uriel's kind of position amongst them, that was very interesting. But mostly the sword. Oh, yeah. Okay, that one wasn't explained fully in this book, but it probably will be more important in book two, but I really liked it. Yeah. Um, I think one of the primary difficulties that this genre can have, the whole angels versus demons thing, is that there are certain expectations placed upon both sides that a writer kind of can go too far into, which makes the angels sort of stiff, sort of holier than thou, um, sort of, you know, we know best, etc. I don't think this book did that at all. Um, I think the angels and I think the personalities were actually very well done. Um, there was still that element of piety while being human enough to evoke um, sympathy, so that you could understand the characters, their struggles, what was going on. I think that was done extremely well, with Uriel in particular and Raphael as well. I think those two were the ones that really defined the characters for me. Um, I think the situation with Chandra, the Cambion, I think she was also very interesting because she seemed to fit in well with the angels while also being separate. Personality-wise, I mean, I think she fit perfectly, and then the situation was just um, a little bit, mm, I don't know how to describe it, outcast, but not. Yeah, I think, I think it was done exceptionally well. I really liked the characters. Um, I think the only character that I didn't fully understand was Dante. I mean, his story was sort of explained later on in the book, and I think we'll probably learn more in book two, but um, I didn't quite understand what he was and why he was. Um, granted, again, book two is a thing and it will be explained then, and I'm sure, but I think that was the only real mm, difficulty I had with the characters. I mean, it was a very interesting plot point. And I think that um, his presence sort of initiated a lot of important things that were going on and that needed to happen. But as far as a character, he felt less real than some of the other characters and more plot central. 
again, again, I don't think that's going to be much of an issue in book two because, you know, that's kind of the whole thing with the series is that questions are answered the farther in you get. As a writer, I appreciate this a great deal. As a reader, I just want to know all the answers right now. Yep. Um, but anyways, I, I really I enjoyed this book. I think it was very interesting. Um, it took me a, m a minute or two to get into the story, but after the first 10-15 pages, I think it worked just grand. I didn't really feel overwhelming pace-wise. I think things were paced out very nicely. Um, there were times of action and then times of kind of recovery and musing that I think worked very well. Neither one outweighed the other. It felt very smooth. The prose was good. I didn't notice any errors, which is always lovely. Uh, I think it worked very well. It was very easy to read, very easy to get through, and I liked the characters. Um, yeah, but the story, I think, I think it did really well. In also fulfilling some of my expectations with end of world fighting war etc but also not doing exactly what i expected i appreciate that a great deal so anyways if you are interested in this book as usual all the links are in the description box below you can find them there uh you can find my links there too if you like books and things <laughs> uh yeah self promo always weird um yeah, I'd say this is definitely worth a read if you're interested in end of world um, or just dystopian fantasy. I think it does really well. I liked it a lot. Anyways, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you have a grand day. It is in that weird space between winter and spring where the world is kind of like, uh, things should happen, but they're not gonna yet. So <laughs> my advice is to sit down, read a book, have some tea or coffee or hot chocolate or whatever you prefer, and um, I shall see you next time. Bye.